I think in order to have a, a well-constructed conversation, we need to understand what the metabolism is. And we can start with the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Well, the mitochondria are, are uh, 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 an organelle inside the cell. Or, uh, we have a cell, just like we have organs in our body, the liver, the kidneys, the spleen. These are organs in our body. We have different organelles, structures inside a cell. The nucleus, everybody's familiar with the nucleus, contains the genetic material. And then we have the Golgi, and then we have the ribosomes, and we have the lysosomes. But we also have another organelle called the mitochondrion. And this is kind of a spaghetti network. There's a lot, they fuse and they fizz. It's a second organism inside one organism. This came, came about, um, um, about two, two billion years ago uh, when two organisms fused together. Uh, one organism able to use oxygen and the other organism not able to use oxygen. So what happens then is these two organisms fused, allowed a division of energy labor, leading to multicellular organisms, metazoans, which we are the eventual descendants of these multicellular processes. This all came about as having an organelle that could capture oxygen and use it as an acceptor of electrons, thereby producing energy so much more efficiently with minimal uh, fuel. Um, before that happened, all the cells on the planet, the living organisms, were mostly single-cell organisms that would divide rapidly, uncontrolled division, uh, uh, unbridled proliferation, and this would stop once the fermentable fuels, that would be fuels to be used without oxygen. Because originally our Earth had no oxygen. Don't forget, it was a very hypoxic environment. There was no oxygen. Oxygen was created by these bacteria that produced oxygen. Mm -hmm. so, 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 then we, so that, that little organelle became the mitochondrion. Mm. So uh, the mitochondria is in all the cells of our body. Uh, when fertilization happens, the egg uh, has the mitochondria. And as the organism develops, the mitochondria becomes semi-differentiated into the different organs and systems. But, all, but basically, they're responsible for producing the highly energy efficiency. That's why you and I are breathing right now. We're, we're taking in oxygen so I can know what I'm saying and say something and look at you. You can look at me. And we don't have to worry about uh, our, uh, our intestines. We don't have to worry about our lungs. All this is working because they're highly energy efficient. Um, so, and that's driven by these little organelles call, called the mitochondria. And when cells divide, they divide. Uh, they have their own division cycle, by the way. Uh, but they pretty much control, uh, they, they, under, they control the differentiated quiescent state of our cells. And when our cells need to grow to replace dead and dying cells due to wear and tail, tear, they are very uh, regulatory to allow our cells to replace those that have died or, or need, we need new cells in a very ordered way. So they control the destiny of all of our cells. So when that organelle becomes corrupted and can no longer do that efficiently, these cells fall back on the ancient fermentation pathways, which is unbridled proliferation. So the default state, which is what happens when you no longer have this control, is rapid proliferation. It's exactly what cancer cells are doing. They're falling back on these ancient fermentation pathways because the organelle that controls their destiny and their growth and their quiescent has become corrupted. And therefore, these cells fall back. And then when they fall back on this proliferation, you can't live without energy, ATP. So how do they get ATP? Well, they get it through non-oxidative procedures called fermentation. And then what we found in others, what, do they, what are the fuels that drive fermentation? And that becomes the sugar glucose and the amino acid glutamine. We just published a big paper. It just came out in, uh, in Twitter today, yesterday, showing how cancer cells in brain tumors, brain cancer cells, are, are driven by, by two prime fuels, glucose and glutamine. And I, I don't, there's another fermentation mechanism that happens inside the mitochondria. That's why the paper is so big, because we've defined a second fermentation pathway inside the organelle that's supposed to respire. It's unbelievable. I, I, I'm sorry I have to be... Uh, no, this is brilliant. This is so interesting to me. So basically what you're saying is the breakdown of the mitochondria is the reason for, the, for this, the dysregulation and dysfunction of the mitochondria. Yeah. And, and it's also the reason for the collection of mutations in the nucleus that everybody thinks are important. 
So when the mitochondria become corrupted over time, it doesn't happen overnight. If it happens quickly, the cell dies and never becomes a cancer. That's what Warburg said. But when you have this dysfunctional mitochondria, it produces reactive oxygen species, radicals, radicals. They damage DNA, RNA, and protein. So most of the genetic damage in that you see in the nucleus, the mutations that everybody is focusing on, not everybody, but majority of the cancer people are focusing on those mutations. They're caused by the, the, abnormal, the abnormal radicals coming out of the damaged mitochondria because, the, because those radicals are carcinogenic and mutagenic. They cause the mutations that people are studying. So we're, the majority of people in the cancer field are studying things that are downstream epiphenomena. Mm -hmm. they're, not the, they're, they're, the, they're an effect, they're not the cause. Now, because of that, that's why the cancer epidemic is continuing to go because we have 1,700 people a day dying in this country every day from cancer. That's 70 an hour, 600, almost 12,000 per year, at least in 2024. And that's because we're not focusing on the really important issue of, of what's, what's causing these cells to grow uh, uh, dysregulated. And how do you stop this? Very easy to stop them. You just pull the plug on their fermentation fuels. But you won't do that if you've been indoctrinated to think that cancer is a genetic disease. Oh, I think there's also an education and public health issue here. A, public health, yes, we've just established that. But how many people understand really, you know, I talk to people on a daily basis, the average pe person doesn't really understand what the mitochondria is or phosphorylation and the fermentation process. So when you say pull the plug, yeah. what does that actually mean? Well, it's not only the guy on the street, it's the guy in the top medical schools as well. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so you're not just talking about the guy on the street, you know, he has an yeah. excuse. He has an excuse not to know, but the guys in the top pharmaceutical companies, medical schools, and the NIH should know. Mm. And they, that's, what I, that's the dogma. That's what I'm saying. You, you can't blame some guy who's never been trained to know what, what this is, but you, but you certainly can blame somebody that should know and, and refuses not to know. That's mm -hmm. the problem right there. So, so, um, so, so anyway, that, that's why we have this tragedy. And, uh, and it's a refusal on the part of the academic uh, because of the dogma. And it's because of the, the consensus bias. That's what it is. And because of the, um, the amount of money generated from current uh, uh, cancer therapies is enormous. You know, everybody's back slapping and having a good time. Well, we got 1,700 people a day dying from this disease miserably, too.